I am on the sinking sand In the storm is close at hand And all my anxious fear and world they surround And like a flood the hurt rushes in I am on the troubled sea, the restless waves underneath my feet. Though the waters rise around and my faith sinks within me, I'm not too far from mercy's reach. When my hopes are dying in. Won't you remind me so I remember? Oh, rock eternal, oh, God of ages, your name is higher than songs can sing. Through every struggle, the trials and chains. Thy glory guide me in perfect peace. I am on the desert sand, endless miles from the promised land. Everything that is within me longs to know. Where you lead, who to trust when I don't understand? When my hopes are dying in, won't you remind me so I remember? Oh, rock eternal, oh God. Songs can sing through every struggle, the trials and changes. Thy glory guide me in perfect peace. Through the wind, through the storm, through the fire, oh, the depths of peace I don't understand. I can't understand.
morning. Welcome to You Sunday. We are going to start out with a song, His Mercy is More.
You may be seated. I want to welcome you to Bethel, friends. It's great to have all of you with us today as we worship the Lord. Today's Youth Sunday, but I get to do announcements and pastoral prayer, and then we'll go back to the youth here in just a moment as the youth come down and be seated. Aren't they doing a great job leading these first few songs? You'll hear more from them in a little bit, including some testimonies and a slideshow. And also, there's Colin. I was looking for Colin. It's good to have Colin. Uh, most of you have heard Colin play with us before, sometimes on Communion Sunday, including the last Youth Sunday and maybe the last two Youth Sundays. And so it's good to have Colin with us in addition to the youth uh, to play uh, piano for us. A few quick announcements. Uh, first, welcome to Bethel Friends. It's great to have all of you with us today. If you're a visitor, we want to extend a special warm welcome and let us know how we can serve you. Uh, uh, in addition to that, we do have little cards in the pews, and if, if it's your first time or maybe you want more information, even though you've come a few times, attended before, fill that out. You can put it in the offering box or even hand it to me on your way out, and if you haven't, I have a, um, some information I would just love to give you about the church, including some other things. If uh, today or any time you made a new commitment to Jesus as Lord and Savior, there's a little card in your pews, and you can fill that out too. We would love to celebrate that. Maybe you have questions about the faith, and you would like me to call you. You can, you can fill that out and put it in the offering boxes. Offering boxes are in the back as you exit the sanctuary on the left. There's also one to the back um, left inside the sanctuary too. Or you could just hand it to me on your way out, and we'd love to talk more. A few announcements along uh, those lines are actually, this is a different topic. We have the great giveaway coming up in two weeks. There's information about that in your bulletin. It is two weeks from yesterday, right, Pam? Two weeks from yesterday. And most of you are aware of the great giveaway. Things come in and we give them away. And it's advertised to the community and to the church and to others. Uh, there's clothing, there's, there's furniture, there's different things. If you have questions about that, see Pam or see me or call the office. But keep that in mind. That's coming up very, very, very soon. Another special announcement that I need to um, share. Uh, and this is a prayer and an announcement. Keep Nick Gavolis in prayer. Nick has been dealing with a lot of hip pain, really, really bad hip pain. And it's the hip that actually he had re uh, already had replaced. He's seeing specialists. He's waiting, uh, waiting on an MRI. Uh, but along those lines, Nick was also our spiritual life ministry team chair. And so he has had to step aside from that. And Blaine Rock is going in that leadership position as the interim chair. Now, Blaine Rock has been serving as an elder very faithfully, and we're thankful for that. But you can't serve as an elder and a ministry team chair. So he has resigned the position of elder so that he could lead spiritual life. That means we are down one elder. We have four elders plus me. We usually, we are, we, the bylaws uh, say to have five elders in addition to me. So in the next few months, we will be praying about, discerning, replacing his eldership position. And by the December business meeting, uh, you'll be able to vote on the next elder. If we're ready before that time, if you're ready, be, if we are ready before that time, we'll have a special business meeting. You'll be made aware at least two Sundays before, and you'll vote on that elder position. And at that point, you also vote on the spiritual life position. So th those are positions that are voted on by you. And so you'll be made aware, and you have an opportunity to vote on those positions. But we wanted to know about that. Keep Nick in prayer, and keep our elders in prayer. If maybe you feel called to, you know, we have a few names that we are considering, praying over, discerning, and we'll be talking to those people. But maybe you uh, feel called to the position of elder. If that's the case, please share that with me, and I'll take your name before our elders to talk about. The, the elders function as a nominating committee, but we also bring ministry council in. So it'll be the elders and ministry council voting on that position, and then, and then the congregation. The congregation have the final say in all of our officers as a congregational church. So the only other announcement that I want to share with you today is keep in mind the prayer ministry that we aim to start in November. And I want to help clear up some things and, um, uh, about that. So the prayer ministry, the, the goal of this prayer ministry is to have people grow closer together through meeting to pray once a week. November through December, meeting to pray once a week. And so, you know, instead of like, you know, I know Timothy Burns pretty well. And so I could say, hey, me and Timothy are going to be a group. Well, we don't really want to do that. I would sign up. Tim would sign up. Others sign up. 
And then the elders are going to look over, and we're, we will form the groups because part of the goals of this prayer ministry is that you get to know people better in the church that maybe you don't know. And you pray together, and you learn each other's needs. I already know certain things to pray for for Timothy, and Timothy knows things to pray for for me. We already know those types of things. But in this case, you'll get to know people as you pray together. You'll get to know some people in the church that you, don't get, that you may not know that well right now. And so the groups will be two to three people per group. So, um, you know, maybe in, the, in a certain case there might be four, but the goal is two to three people per group. And you may be wondering, well, do I have to pray at the church? No, you can pray. You, once the groups are formed, you could talk amongst the group and determine, hey, we want to meet at my house this week and your house next week or, or some coffee shop or Chick-fil-A, I don't know, wherever you want to meet. You could meet at the church if you want, and you can meet when it's convenient for you. Maybe you're a 3 a.m. person and you want to meet at 3 a.m. Maybe you're a midnight person you want to meet at midnight. Maybe you want to meet at Tuesdays at noon. I, you know, you get to determine as a group what's most convenient for you based off your schedule, and it doesn't have to be the same time each week. So you get to pick the location, you get to pick the time, you know, and day, and, uh, you know, we will form the groups. It will be groups of men and groups of women, you know, so y they're not going to be, that way you can feel very comfortable with each other. If you have any questions, please see Blaine Rock, who's the co-leader of that, or see me. But, you know, we want to be a church that really, 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 really commits to pray. One other thing I want to share about it is we will give you a prayer list. You know, we already print out a prayer list each week, but I'm going to give you the prayer list to each group. It'll be back there. You can pick it up, but we'll put a little extra information in it, maybe a devotional that you could share together. So you could share devotion together. You could share prayer requests. Then you could share each other's prayer needs, you know, whatever it might be, and you could pray for one another. Please sign up for that. I, I, I think it's really, really going to be great. And Oh, by the way, one other thing. Maybe you have trouble driving, you know, as it gets dark early or getting out or maybe it's a snowy week or something. You could also pray by phone, you know, or uh, do something like that if you have to. We want it. We just want to gather the church together, praying together. Don't hesitate to ask me any questions about that. So speaking of prayer, that's the next subject. We want to gather together and pray right now. Uh, again, please keep Nick Gavolis in prayer, and I want to share a few other prayer needs within the church. Cheryl Olson is recovering from knee replacement. She's recovering well, and keep her in prayer. Cheryl Wall came home after having surgery on her back on Friday. The surgery was Thursday, came home Friday. We want to keep Cheryl in prayer. Uh, Katie Coy right here. We want to pray for her left wrist, which there's a possible, it sounds like, fracture, compression fracture of the growth plate on that arm. And they're seeking more answers this week. Uh, but anytime there's concern about the growth plate, it needs prayer, uh, as well as other fractures. So we're going to lift up Katie in prayer. And I think a few others I want to share. Dick Lotz is fighting off COVID. Pray for Dick. Uh, and also, Bill and Mary Rotar have COVID. We want to pray for Bill and Mary Rotar. For three weeks, they've had one sickness after another after another. Pray for them. Cheryl Mayhew, do you start your test this week or next week? First week of October, she's going to start her test so that she can get a valve replacement. So I want to pray for Cheryl and Debbie Pasco. I want to put you on the spot real quick. Allie, how is she doing? So her granddaughter Allie had a concussion three weeks ago, or maybe even four this week, and uh, getting therapy, you said, but not much improvement. So we want to pray for her. So let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to come together right now, and we come together to worship you, and Lord God, how exciting it is to have the youth leading us in worship today, leading us in the, in the songs, hearing testimonies in a little bit as they share, being recognized as they memorize scripture and other things. It's just so great to see them involved, and, and also even uh, Morgan in the back uh, helping on the computer. It's really wonderful, and Lord Jesus, we all come together as a body of Christ to worship you. We all come together to, to glorify you, to exalt you, to praise you, and to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And how awesome that is. And we want to worship you in the spirit and in truth, Lord. We also come together to pray for one another, to pray. And so, Lord God, right now as we do come together and as we do pray, we pray for these various needs. Lord, I pray for Allie that she would have dramatic improvement in healing from that concussion. 
and encourage her family as well. We pray for Cheryl Olson for continued recovery from the knee replacement. We miss her and look forward to seeing her soon back with us in worship. And Cheryl Wall, we pray for Cheryl Wall's healing from that back surgery. And those, those with COVID, Dick Lotz, and we pray for healing. He's been through a lot and in a very bad case. We pray for healing. And Bill, Bill and Mary Rotar, now with COVID, but one or both of them being sick for two weeks. We pray for healing. We pray for Nick Gavolis. Please heal his hip and take away pain. He's in such terrible pain. We pray for healing. Lord God, we pray for Katie. Lord God, I pray that this, you'll provide a swift, smooth healing. You'll take away pain. You'll give wisdom as they examine her more this week. And that she will not need surgery. Lord God, you know the various other requests. Judy Stevenson dealing with blood pressure issues and, and various other things. You know them all. And we turn them over to you. We also dedicate today's offering to you. It belongs to you. Please bless the gifts and the givers. And Lord God, the greatest need of all is spiritual. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would all grow, grow, grow closer to you. That you would be our hope. You would be our desire. We'd be satisfied in you. We would treasure our relationship with you. Not just uh, eternity with you, that too, but our relationship of knowing you right now. Because there is no greater thing. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The next thing, uh, part of this youth service is a slideshow. We're, we have a slideshow of the youth trip at Niagara Falls. And we're going to start that right now.
guys enjoyed that slideshow, and I hope you paid attention to the songs we got through, and we're about to sing together. All right, so we are going to recognize the youth group for their memory work, and we'll be recognizing the children's ministries uh, for their memory work as well. So just a reminder as to um, what it takes for the youth to get through their memory work. They have seven levels. You start in sixth grade, and each year you have to meet you know, whatever level you're on to be able to re be recognized. So if you're in sixth grade, you have, to be rec you have to finish level one to be recognized. If you're in seventh grade, you have to do sixth grade again and add level two, so there'll be levels one and two, and you keep going until 
We are seniors through all seven levels. Now, some of them have gone above and beyond and met their levels, and then they can continue to go on further, which I'm really excited because we have a number of kids that did that this year. So let me get to the ones that, that were able to do it. And uh, as I call them, if you would come up, um, we will give you your award here. So Diva, she finished her, her level, level one. Go on to Katie. Come on up. So Katie finished six of the seven levels, and she actually got her reward already. So she, uh, good job. <laughs> but we still recognize you. Um, the next one is Morgan. If you would come on up. We're making her come all the way from the back, so she's going to be up here for a minute. So Morgan had to get through level three, and she finished through level six. Four, yeah. So she did very good, we're very proud of her. So here's the reward. Um, our next one, we are gonna go with Mercedes. Come on up. So Mercedes needed to do through level one, and she is now the second one that only needed to do through level one and finished all seven levels. Congratulations. And now I need to see the smile on your face because I spelled your name the way you <laughs> love it. <laughs> All right, Ryan, come on up here. Ryan. So Ryan, I'm going to say he needed to finish through level four. He finished all seven levels, but he challenged himself this year because he's done this in the past. He made it through all seven levels twice this year. So congratulations, Ryan. So those are the youth that did it. I'm very proud of all of them that did it. And it's something that I don't want them to just, you know, do it and then it's a forgotten thing. It's even if you don't necessarily can not remember them yourself off the top of your head, when you need them, the Holy Spirit who lives in us will help you to remember those when you need them. And it's really good to have that those biblical basics. And I hope that they don't just take these verses and that's it. I hope that they continue to look into the Bible and see that they need to memorize different verses that will help them in their daily life. So these are just like a springboard for something then to encourage them to do something. So now Wendy is going to do the uh, so I liked it so much that I decided to do it with the girls program. So I had some youth that would help us out as well as um, some of the athletes and things like that. So we have four levels in the children's program. Starting with our preschool, kindergarten, eighth level, and we had two kids complete their full level. So one was Theo Yoma, and he comes in from kindergarten, so I just wanted to make sure. And JC Boyd. <laughs> they like that better than Gibson. <laughs> and then I had two young ladies finish all four levels. Nicole Wade finished all four levels. That's a huge challenge to do. So I got them a special t-shirt with a mountain on it and a two little prayer shirt with a mountain on it. And then Abby had to complete three levels and she completed all four levels as well. So she did pretty good. So we are very proud of all of them, and we encourage them to continue to have that want, that desire to get into God's word, to learn God's word, and not just read it, but really know it. And that's one of the reasons why we do this. And we just love that we had so many of them that are willing to do this. This is the first time we've ever had two do all seven levels for the youth group in the same year. This is the first time we've had four of them do at least through level six in the same year. And I'm talking not just when I've been at this church now, I think for eight years, it's also when I was at our previous church for the six years that we did that there as well. So that's, I'm very proud of all of them. So if you give them another round of applause. All right, so we are going to move on to a couple more songs. So if everyone is standing, if you can come on up, we're gonna be 
to power in the blood and then power of the cross.
now going to have the youth share. Um, I know we have we had five youth go with us on our youth trip to Niagara Falls, and they're all going to say a little bit about uh, something they learned or an experience they had um, when they were there. And Brian's going to share some valuable stuff. <laughs> Good morning. So this year, the youth had the privilege of going to Niagara Falls. On our first night there, we went down to the falls immediately and watched the fireworks show. Before, on a, after the fireworks show, Pastor Steve talked to us and we talked about the falls and we were just watching the falls and how just God is such a spectacular creator. Uh, later in the week, we also recorded the sermon that Pastor Steve played up here for uh, Sunday. And so we had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, the first or second night, we went to Rainforest Cafe. So that was just a great bonding experience together. It was a great meal. And the second day, we also went to um, the fort, Fort Niagara. Uh, we first got there, and we got to climb up a lighthouse. Top of the lighthouse, we could see Toronto, Canada over Lake Ontario. And then we walked into the fort. We got to see a short film of the fort's history, and then we were guided on a tour. During the tour, we saw a flag that was referred to as the sister flag to the Star Spangled Banner. The, it's the one that is up there. And so a cool uh, connection to that is in March, I got to go to DC and see the Star Spangled Banner. And then in the beginning of June, I got to go see the sister flag to it in Fort Niagara. Uh, before we left the fort, we did a lesson on the armor of God, so that was really cool, learning about the armor of God uh, while we were at the fort. And so the burn marks, real quick, on the, fo on the flag were from 1813. It was during the War of 1812, but when the fort was burnt down, the flag got all those burn marks on it. So that's why it looks like they're stained on there. Um, on our way home from the fort, we stopped at Whirlpool State Park and we got to go on a really cool adventure. We went down on this really long, ver very difficult hike uh, down the side of the, um, it was kind of like a walkway, but also like, cliff. yeah, there was kind of, it was, it was a cliff. And, what, but once we got to the bottom, we got to see, we were on the same level as the water. We got to see the end of the rapids and we got to see the whirlpool. And we were out on like, these big rocks out by right by the water, and that was amazing to see all that coming together. Uh, the, our, our last day, we got we went back to the falls. We ate lunch there at a restaurant called Top of the Falls Restaurant, and we saw the falls while we eat while we ate. The cool part about that is just we got to talk, and before we left, we just got to see the falls while we were eating lunch. But because they had a wall of windows, we could just look out and. It was really cool just to experience God's nature in a whole different way that you can't see it here. Thank you. Um, so just a quick thing about that, uh, that hike at Whirlpool State Park. Um, let's just say tears were shed. Um, <laughs> D don't ask, it was bad. Um, so as you know, back in June, uh, we went to Niagara Falls. Um, one thing that we did do that I think was my favorite part of the trip is that we went to Fort Niagara, which is a former military base around 30 minutes north of the falls. The history is complicated and I don't have time to talk about it all, but let's just say it was a focal point of war and prevents boats from falling 512 feet to their death. But when we were there, we truly got to see the beautiful world that God has created. One thing that really amazed me is that we got to see the Toronto skyline clear as day over Lake Inter Ontario, which is around 100 miles away. We also saw some cute foxes and foxholes in foxholes, some historic buildings, and an overflowing ashtray. It was truly my favorite part of the trip. But let's talk about the main... <laughs> we did see that. It was gross. <laughs> But let's talk about the main point of the trip. How the falls itself shows the clear evidence of a creator. From the clear blue water to the beautiful soft mist, I'm not entirely sure why people don't believe there is a creator. We talked about, we talked about this on the trip, 
And one passage we talked about is Ashford. I'm going to read that real quick. Um, so this starts in verse 9. But some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians and of those from Cilicia and Asia rose up and disputed with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with, with which he was speaking. Then they secretly instigated men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council. And they set up false witnesses who said, This man never ceases to speak words against the holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this is Jesus of Nazareth. We'll destroy this place and we'll change the customs that Moses delivered to us. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. So in short, the world is against us, as we saw with Stephen. Even if there are clear signs of a creator, we're still going to get persecuted. So if you ever find yourself overlooking Niagara Falls, be amazed and glorify God. Don't worry about what others will think and enjoy the world that God has given to us because we won't be here forever. So what really stuck out to me about our Niagara Falls trip was it opened my eyes and reminded me just how beautiful and important nature really is. As humans, we tend to forget how important it is because we get so caught up in destroying it, cutting down trees, littering, etc. And we seem to forget that as humans, we need nature to live and that was the sole purpose it was created was for our enjoyment and protection. My whole life I have always heard how amazing nature really is, but I never truly understood that until this trip. It made me realize how much as humans we take the nature for granted and we need to stop before it's too late and no one is able to enjoy it. Thank you. June, the youth group went on an annual youth trip. This year we went to Niagara Falls, New York. We went for a total of four days and three nights. I'd like to share about God's cre creation, relationships with God and with friends, and some other fun things we did. The first thing we did when we got there was walking through the falls with fireworks. And my first thought when I saw it was, wow, it's so beautiful. I can't believe God made that. It's so amazing. Afterward, we went on a walk through the whole area around the falls, and it was kind of dark, so it was a little confusing for me, at least the way we were going. But when we went later that week in daylight, it wasn't so confusing anymore. We went to Whirlpool State Park. Again, I was amazed. At Whirlpool State Park, we got to see more of God's creation by taking a hike. On the ride to Niagara Falls, we saw some beautiful scenery, and I definitely enjoyed it. I loved the trip mostly for getting deeper in my faith with God and closer to my friends that came along. Every day, we did multiple devotions, and I loved every single one. We talked about how God created all of the, of the things we saw, including the falls and Whirlpool State Park. We had time to swim in the pool for a while at the hotel on two different days. That also helped us have so much more fun together with friends. We had time to walk with others on rides, or talk with others on rides to different places, or on walks we went on all together as a group. We did some fun things, too. We went on the Maid of the Mist, where we went into Canadian waters, which I thought was so cool. On the Maid of the Mist, we got a very up-close view of the Canadian Falls, or Horseshoe Falls. This is the side of the falls that is the prettiest, in my opinion at least, and it is also the biggest of the falls. We also went to Cave of the Wind, which was awesome. At Cave of the F Wind, we watched an educational video, which gave us, uh, us some good information about the falls. After the videos, we began a short walk to the area where the water begins to fall on the platform area. This was at Bridal Veil Falls. We got on the platforms and there we, we could start to feel the water splashing onto us. As soon as we got to the main platform, the water was falling on us, not fully. When we were done, we were kind of soaking through our ponchos, since the ponchos weren't the best ponchos. 
They were producing. We went to Fort Niagara and got to watch some educational videos there too. We got to take a short tour through the fort and then we got to watch a short Civil War reenactment. We also got to walk through Fort, Ni or Fort Niagara by ourselves afterward. We did a devotion there and we could look out over Lake Ontario and see Toronto and Canada and it was beautiful. We used trip this year with Delta and I really enjoyed it. I'm so glad I went and I can't wait for the next youth trip. My favorite part of the youth trip this year was probably growing deeper in my faith with God and relationships with him. And, fo and then following that, seeing the falls and Quebec again. We took a three and a half drive there, hour drive there, but it was so worth it. On the first night we got there, we checked out the hotel and walked around a bit before going to the falls. Once we got to the falls, it was very exciting. It looked beautiful. When it gets dark, they illuminate the falls. It's truly spectacular. The next morning, we decided to go to King Horn for breakfast. Yum. After we headed straight over to the Cave of the Lion, once we got down to the bottom of Gadigal Falls, we could feel the power of the water. We have to think about how graceful the falls were, but how powerful the water really is. God is like the falls, looking kind and graceful, but if you look closely, he is also kind. On the next day, we walked around Three Sisters Island and Goat Island. We did many different spots. It was amazing to see how big the islands are, even though they are so small. It's crazy that God saw the earth, even billions of miles into outer space, and he planted trees every detail there. After the walk, we headed over to Fort Niagara to learn about the armor of God. But before we did, we got a guided tour of Fort Niagara. One main thing we learned about was the flag. It was the actual flag flying during the World War II flag. Inside the fort, we got to see a very fatiguing demonstration of what they would do during the war. While we were there, we got to learn about the armor of God. Once we left, we got to walk around and we found a path that led to the bottom of the falls near the war camp. It was a very long, difficult hike that some of us called the hike of death. After that, we were all hungry and tired, so we got some dinner at Rainbow's Cafe and went to sleep. It's amazing to see how many, how many creatures and life forms God made. But God made even more than what was at Rainbow's Cafe. The next day, when we woke up, we were all feeling much less tired, but some of us were sore. We headed to the falls, did one last devotional, and then we headed home. I'm very proud of all the youth that got up here and spoke, even though some of them might not have wanted to get up in front of people to speak, and uh, so I appreciate that. They did a really good job. So a couple things I do want to make a comment on. Uh, so that song, Greater, that you heard, you know, that we first heard during the slideshow and then they sung, that is the youth song, you know, some people think it's a good song, but it's actually greater. That, you're welcome. <laughs> so. As Ben pointed out, we were in the fort and we actually saw a fox that was in a fox hole that was in a fox hole. So if you follow that and understood what I was saying there, that's <laughs> where he was going with that and you had to really like pay attention to see what was being said there. So um, Ryan really, really, really badly wanted to go on a hike during this trip. And then we let him choose which path to take. So <laughs> and you may have heard it referenced now as the hike of death. So it, what it was is we were hiking from the top of the gorge down to the bottom. And most of it was on rocks that were about this wide with no railing or anything on the side. And we were just going back and forth all the way down. I think it was about a mile and a half, two miles each way. So it was, a, it was a lot rougher than we expected because it, it didn't like tell us how hard this was going to be. But it turned out to be a really, really hard hike that, you know, we, as we were walking through, you know, we were going through all these stones, you know. Some people didn't like it. I thought it rocked. <laughs> Do you 
kids love that. <laughs> All right, and then, uh, but they, I was very proud of them because even the ones that might not have enjoyed it as much, some of them really liked it, some of them not as much, and they pushed through and, got, you know, and they were able to do it. You know, some of the things that we talked about as we were walking around different places, whether it was, um, you know, doing that hike or walking around Goat Island, uh, we were talking, you know, this is how Jesus got from place to place. You know, he didn't get in a car and go over to the next town. You know, he was walking from this town to this town to this town. And he was talking with his disciples. There was probably a lot of learning going on there. Just as when we were walking around, there was, we were just having discussions about, you know, how cool God made things. And how it, it, this isn't just chance. This is, we had a creator. And it was really awesome to see how they, re they really connected that. Um, so... Cave of the Winds, if you ha haven't been to Niagara Falls and down to the Cave of the Winds, so if you're looking at the falls, you know, you have the Canadian side, which is Horseshoe, and then you have this island in the middle, and then you're on the American side, you have the American side of the falls with this real little extra falls that uh, has a little sectioned off, and it's called Bridal Veil Falls. So if you go into that Goat Island, which is be between those two falls, the American and the Canadian side, there's a spot where you can take an elevator down to the bottom of the falls. And then they had this um, deck that you can walk along. If you've ever seen the commercial for Thompson's Water Seal, that they're talking about that, well, this is the, where we went. And if you could see the video that was being shown, that's actually the, the fall from the Bridal Veil Falls going on to the kids. To know the power of, the, of that going on, you, it felt like it was, you were being pelted by, like, hail. It's pretty much, if you've ever been on that, that's what that feels like. I mean, it's really powerful. So then they, they really got to feel the power of that water, and which is why we were singing, you know, the power of the cross, and the, there's power in the blood. I'm like, there's power in water, but there's nothing compared to what Jesus did for us. And we, you know, we hit home with things like that. And I do have to say, as we were going down to Cave of the Winds, and we just kept seeing snakes all over the place. And I know Pastor Steve was just sitting there thinking, snakes. Why does it have to be snakes? <laughs> we all know how much you love snakes. But it really helped as we were walking around. They got to build relationships. It's very important for the youth to have those Christian relationships. I'm like this, they're being beaten down every day. I'm like, because there's social media out there. There's just, you know, they're, what, what they're putting there out, just to, even if you're trying to watch a regular TV show, what's on commercials? or what they're trying to teach you, I if you're in a public school, what they're trying to teach you in the public school about you know, evolution. And they need that Christian backing from each other so they have that support group. And this is one of the things where they really develop some of those relationships so they know that they can trust some people and like, hey, if I have a problem and I need to come back to my roots and say, okay, you know, I have friends that are backing me, Christian friends that I can trust. And that's one of the things that this really helped with. Um, one of the things we always do on our youth trips is we always try to have lessons done out in public because we want them to know that, hey, it's, n it's fine to be a Christian in public because that's not what the world's teaching us these days. The world's teaching us, you know, you, you hide your Christian faith. But we don't want to do that. We want our Christian faith to be shown. We don't want to be obnoxious about it, so we're not going to get in front of people and start screaming at them or, like, throwing the Bible over at them and say, you need this. No, but we need to let them know that they should not be ashamed of their faith. And, that, and if you, could, you saw some of the pictures of us doing our lessons outside. Steve was there with us, and he was doing a couple of lessons. I did a couple of lessons, and he even did the sermon from there, which you guys were able to see if you were here um, that, sun, that second Sunday in June, first Sunday in June, whatever which Sunday that was. Um, so it's very important, I think, that we aren't afraid to show that. And we always want to model that for the youth. And that's why we do those lessons out there in public so that they can see that. It's modeled for them. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to just talk about some points. I'm really glad that we had the youth that were able to come. I'm really glad that the youth were able to, that are here this morning that were able to help us sing, help us play the music, Help us back there with the, with the uh, slides. Morgan's back there. We appreciate that. I want to thank Steve and Wendy for helping with all that they've helped with because Steve came with us this time, so he was one of our chaperones, and Wendy's helping me. She's there whether she wants to be or not. 
but she always does one of these. She's the one that got me started with uh, working with the youth, so it's always been a passion of hers, too. And we always are thankful that you guys let us do this. It's our honor and privilege to work with your kids, and we just thank you so much for that. All right, we do have one closing song here to go. Who's going to share first? Oh, you want? Okay. Start. I can, then I'll introduce the song. Um, so I just want to thank the youth before the closing song. Give them a round of applause, please. Uh, as you all know, it's very intimidating getting up in front and singing or sharing or speaking. Mercedes wrote up her thing, and Friday night she got home from a bonfire at the middle, middle school for the Heartland and said, can you read what I wrote? And then yesterday she had us read it, and I was looking at her final draft, and I was reading it, and she's watching. I said, Mercedes, go get me my red pen. And, and she said, no! Anyways, it, it was really good. I was just kidding. But um, I appreciate all the kids. They shared s- such great things. I appreciate Kevin and Wendy leading today. It was the first youth trip that I got to participate in, which was really nice, leading the first devotion on Goat Island. And as you've heard them share, they want to lead devotions and prayer publicly, so they have a public faith. And as people walked by, we're leading a devotion. I did, Kevin did on one of the trails. We had other devotions in the hotel rooms. And we all talked about God's uh, great creation during this whole trip. We almost ended up actually doing the message. You know, we video recorded the message, which was played here. We almost recorded that a place where snakes were. And we were looking at the place thinking maybe that would be good. And then we saw snakes. And afterwards, and I thought, God saved me right there. Because <laughs> I could have been giving the message, and then a snake starts wrapping around. I mean, they were, they were, like, they were like six feet. No, I'm just kidding. But I don't like snakes. I hate snakes. Anyways, uh, the only other thing that I want to share, of course, the youth did a great job, and I just want to talk about the gospel. This was all about God's great, great creation. God is our creator. The, Kevin and Wendy had been leading on, especially Kevin on Wednesday nights, I think, Genesis, uh, the foundations material, the answers in Genesis. And the point is that Genesis chapters 1 through 11 are the foundations for the Bible. They're the foundations for our life. They're the foundations for everything. And I just want to ask you a probing question before we close. Do you know Jesus? And do you have a relationship with Jesus? I'm not asking if you've just said the sinner's prayer one time. I mean, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you have that fullness of life? In John chapter 15, Jesus says, I'm the true vine, you are the branches. In other words, we live with Jesus in a relationship with him. And it's a relationship of abiding in him, of, of living with him, of trusting with him. It's a relationship like a, a tree branch getting its nourishment from the tree trunk. And Abigail doesn't know I'm going to do this, but I need you. Can you come up here, please? Come on. Don't be shy. I'm choosing Abigail because I can still pick her up. And Mercedes is about as tall as me now. And... Uh, and I could pick her up too. And, and, but anyways, you know, oftentimes we think of our relationship with Jesus like just saying one prayer and we just said the sinner's prayer and then we go about our business, right? And so Abigail, pretend, we did this Wednesday night, so you've been through this once. Pretend that I'm Jesus, obviously I'm not, but pretend I am and you decide to surrender your life to Jesus and so you get on your knees, right? And you say something like, dear Jesus, I'm surrendered to you, and I'm giving my life to you. Please come my life. Help me live for you. And then you can stand up now. You said that. And then she goes about her business, right? I'm standing right here. I'm Jesus. I'm in the same spot. And she's just kind of walking around, like walk from there and come back here. And then she comes back to me, and then she walks this way. And as she grows up, she goes different paths. And, you know, she's going about things. But that's not really how it works. Our relationship with Jesus is different. She gets on, I'm going to get on the floor, it'll be easier that way. She gets on her knees, and she surrenders to Jesus. So get on your knees, because he's the Lord of the universe, right? When we pray, we want to honor that. And she says, dear Jesus, I'm surrendering to you. I'm giving my life over to you. Be my Lord and Savior. And then stand up. And then you know what Jesus does? He picks her up, and he carries her. Everywhere she goes, Jesus is carrying her around. You know, we, we're, she's never separated from Jesus because Jesus is her Lord and Savior, and she lives with Jesus. Okay, you can sit down. Thank you. <laughs> and, and so before we close, I would just like to ask you to reflect. Do you have a life-sustaining, life-fulfilling relationship 
with Jesus. Not a one-time surrender, but a constant surrendering to Jesus. Now, that does mean you, you make it your aim, your desire to follow him with your whole heart. But it also means when you do mess up and sin against him, you have forgiveness. You go back and you say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. And you can know that he will forgive you. First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. So do you know him? Jesus doesn't just want to be your eternal salvation. He wants to be your life now. He wants to have a relate. He loves you. He loves you. And he does have a better plan for your life. He really, really does. But a big part of that is living with him now abiding in him, living, staying connected to him. Of course, you do that by spending time in, in his word, in the Bible, in prayer, surrendering to, to him, sur- uh, having, having a relationship with him through the body of Christ. And so uh, let's bow our heads and close our eyes before this closing song. And if you are, are sitting there thinking, I don't have that kind of relationship. Yeah, I said a prayer at VBS or I said a prayer once. But I don't have that kind of relationship. I invite you to rededicate your life to him right now. If you've never surrendered to him, I invite you to surrender to him. And you can do that by saying a simple prayer like this. You're not saved by the prayer, you're saved by what's in your heart. Lord Jesus, I confess I've sinned and missed your perfect standard. I believe in you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again. Today, Lord, I'm trusting in you as Lord and Savior. I'm committing my life to you. Please come into my life. And help me to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, share it with someone today. We want to celebrate. Fill it out on the cards and the pews. If, if Maybe you're sitting there and you have questions about God or the spiritual life. Maybe you surrendered to him every, a long time ago, but you still have questions. You have doubts. You're, or maybe you have doubts keeping you from surrendering. Fill out that card or talk to me on the way. I would love to talk to you. If you're a one of the youth, or maybe you have a grandchild that would like to talk to one of our youth pastors, they would love to talk to you as well. We just want to help you grow in your faith. Um, And now I get the pleasure of introducing our closing song, Glorious Day. As they come up, I want to invite our altar prayer workers. You guys can start walking up for it. um, Yeah, they will too. So it's going to be a little different, you know. They're excited. This is an exciting song. We usually do have the altars open for prayer at the end and, you know, uh, they are never closed. Um, but just so you know, sometimes in this song, The Glorious Day, some of the kids kind of run as we're celebrating and get a little more dramatic. So you're welcome to come forward, but just be a little more careful as you walk. And, and certainly, you know, we would just love to pray with you as well. So I'm going to invite them to sing Glorious Day. Real quick, as a reminder, we're going to have everybody... Uh, Stand while we do this song. We're yeah. going to see some enthusiasm. The youth are going to bring some too and just enjoy, uh, just have some fun. But make sure you're not in the walkways right now because we're going to have some kids running around.
I invite the youth to go ahead and make their way to the back while I give the closing prayer. If, you know, you didn't cut to come forward and you want to come forward for prayer, you know, following the closing prayer, I know that Eldis, um Oh, yeah. And next week, um, George Ann, is that your last Sunday next week here, I think? Okay. And we're going to be praying over you next week in the service. And it won't be a surprise. I'll just tell you now. We're also going to have a cake in the narthex to recognize you. So don't forget that. And let's keep praying for George Ann as she gets ready to move. Um, I'm going to pray for you in the closing prayer as well. And if you wanted to, would like prayer, Elda's up here. I know that uh, Tim's up here. And they would just love to pray for you before you leave as well. Make sure you say hi to the um, students before you leave too. Go ahead, Jordan. Go ahead. It has been our pleasure, and we thank you. You've been, it's been a joy to pray for you, and we're going to keep praying for you. As your church family, we're going to keep praying for you after you move to Louisville, Kentucky, and definitely keep in touch. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, you did call our name, and we ran out of that grave. Spiritually, we are alive in Christ. That's what the Word of God says. You took our sins upon you, and you gave us your righteousness. So we live with you. We abide in you. John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You came to give us life and give it to us abundantly. So even though we live this, leave this place, even though we leave this place, we leave with Jesus. We leave forgiven, saved born again, whether we del- surrendered to you today or we surrendered to you 75 years ago, the same every day. We live born again. We live free with freedom in Christ. We leave baptized with the Holy Spirit upon us. And Lord God, we pray you would encourage us today with your presence. Encourage us with your presence. And I pray you would help us to be witnesses. Give us opportunities to witness, to talk about you and our love for you and, and, and you being our hope everywhere we go. And Lord God, I do pray for George Ann. I think I meant to pray for her earlier, and I thank you for Elda reminding me. As she still works on getting ready to move and everything and transitions, I pray you would give her good, good, good health and guide her move, encourage her, strengthen her, and be with her. And we will just continue to lift her up. Bless us as we go. Bless all the youth. We thank you for the youth and the children leading today. And bless every single, Lord, every single person here. I pray that you'd be blessed as they leave. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God bless.